Hey guys, Level Cap here, and if you've been following my channel over the past week, you'll know that I am heavily into Star Wars Battlefront. I'm loving the game right now. It's great, the gameplay is a lot of fun, both solo and with friends. There's a lot of things to do in it, and I want it to stay fun, and I want it to stay enjoyable, which is why I'm making this video on the top 10 things that need to be fixed in Star Wars Battlefront for it to continue being an awesome experience. As we play through the game, people unlock more gadgets, more items, figure out how to break game modes, and DICE needs to stay on top of it and make sure that this game stays balanced and fun and fair for everyone. So I've compiled a list of 10 fixes or balances that I think would improve the experience overall. Let's start off with number one. Grenade spam is certainly a hot topic right now. The gunplay in Star Wars Battlefront is really fun, but it's getting less and less enjoyable because you're dying instantaneously to grenades that you can't really defend yourself against. Whether it's an impact grenade, a thermal imploder, or a barrage grenade launcher, there's usually something that's going to kill you that you have very little opportunity to defend yourself against. And I think there's a lot of different ways we can come at grenade spam and try and fix the issue. Here's my take on it. First of all, impact grenades should never be a one-shot kill for splash damage. I'm starting to see the popular trend of just throwing the impact grenade before you even start firing your weapon in a firefight because it's going to give you that guaranteed impact grenade kill. And this is effective. I've started doing it myself. And it's something that you shouldn't have to counter with the bodyguard trait. I think impact grenades should do a maximum of 90% damage with splash. If you do hit somebody directly with the impact, then I think that's okay for it to be a one-shot kill because that's a skill shot right there. That's very hard to hit a direct grenade impact but otherwise the splash should never kill them in one oh shot unless Lord. they're already damaged thermal detonators everybody has them they're right extremely there. easy to unlock they do massive Damn damage it. will kill you in one hit my problem with these is that they have a timer delay that starts when you throw the grenade versus when the grenade hits the ground I think it would be better if these things operated like halo grenades where the detonation timer started from the point of impact rather than the point of throwing. This way you could actually have a chance to escape these things as the timer often goes up as soon as the grenade reaches its target. So you may have a split second warning right before the grenade goes off. So in effect it doesn't really give you any sort of skill or decision in order to escape that grenade. This would allow skilled players to dodge grenades more frequently and newbie players to get less easy kills and be encouraged encouraged less to just chuck grenades everywhere. Jack Frags also had a very good solution to the grenade spam issue, and that was not allowing people to equip multiple grenade devices at a time. So rather than being able to equip a thermal imploder and impact grenade or mixing a barrage in there as well, you'd have to choose between one of those three. That way you can't just chuck them nonstop since everybody essentially has infinite grenades like they're on a 10 second cooldown which is totally insane we have to balance them differently in this game than you do in other games all right let's move on to fix number two the loadout user interface is very annoying i'm constantly spawning in with the wrong kit because there seems to be like a two-step process before you get into the round it's like pick your kit set up your loadout you set it up and you think you're good to go then you spawn into the game and you have the wrong hand because it puts you with like your default hand or something like that instead this loadout ui i think could be refined and improved to the point where veteran players or players who have 30 or 40 hours under their belt aren't constantly spawning in with the wrong loadout by accident. It happens to me all the time. It happens to my friends all the time. It could just be refined to the point where we are more aware of what we're actually spawning into the game with. Also, I think adding one more hand to the game would really improve just the variety of loadouts you could run with, and I wouldn't have to constantly be redesigning my loadout every single game I jump into. I could have a few staples that I like for uh, different game modes. Item number three is fighter balance and tweakings. A-wings seem to be overpowered because I think they are the hardest to hit. I've been on the tail of A-wings many a times and just watched all of my shots miss when I knew if I was on the tail of, say, a TIE fighter, most of my shots would be hitting. I think it's the actual size of the A-wing and however the auto-aim function works with it that you're just inclined to miss way more of your shots when actually trying to shoot down those A-wings. Also, the shield ramming needs to be fixed. I've been able to ram ATSTs with shields on my A-wings wings been able to ram other fighters and live through it it's just something that needs to be updated so that shield ramming can no longer function in addition to that the actual crosshairs on fighters are extremely bad for zeroing in on ground targets whenever i'm strafing an atst in an x-wing or an a-wing 
I have a very hard time hitting it because my actual crosshair obstructs my target. In a way, I feel like this was designed more for consoles because you don't actually have the resolution to see ground targets anyway, so why does it matter what your crosshair looks like? But on PC, I can easily see the ground targets when I'm coming in for a strafing run, except for when I actually try and aim at them because my crosshair just covers the target entirely. Item number four is hero timers. We've seen it time and time again. Somebody picks up a hero, they use them all round long, get massive kills and never die. I've done it with Boba Fett. I've seen X-Factor go on like 62 or more kill streaks with this hero. It's very cool and a skilled player can do a lot of damage with them, but it's not particularly fair to the rest of the team or anybody playing against that hero class. It gets really annoying really fast. And I think one good way to balance this is just to put a timer on all your heroes. How about 90 seconds? That'll force anybody to be more aggressive with that hero to try and do as much damage as possible in 90 seconds to play the objective, to get stuff done, and then they have to despawn and continue playing a soldier and hopefully give somebody else a chance to play as that hero class. Also, it'll hopefully better balance out that scoreboard since getting a hero at the moment is pretty much a guaranteed top of the scoreboard ticket. Item number five is adding in a first person only mode. This is something that I really, really, really want to see in this game because I am tired of the third person camera. Yeah, it's cool to see what you look like when you're running around and it adds a different feeling to the game. But the main negatives of third person camera are one, being able to see around cover without anybody seeing you. So sometimes you just lose firefights because people are exploiting this. And two, a lot of your shots are going to go into cover that's in front of you because it's very hard to tell where your weapon is situated based on the third person camera and you're going going to shoot a lot of your shots in a cover and other things that's going to make you lose firefights or just make you look like a sloppy player because of the way the camera is situated. This doesn't happen nearly as much when you're playing from first person. Item number six, Walker Assault. Great game mode, a lot of fun. For some reason, they never let you play two rounds on the same map in a row so that you can play the opposite team because maybe you just got trashed on the defensive side and you want your chance playing the Imperial so that you can trash the other team using the ATSCs and ATATs. But for some reason, it just switches on to another map after that. It would be a nice option to have a rematch and I think this is something that could have been fixed by having a server browser in the game and custom server so that people could just set up the game modes the way they wanted to play and then you could just look for games that did rematches on every mode of walker assault. Item number seven is very specific, but I see a lot of people complaining about the DL44 blaster pistol right now because it can one shot kill you or two shot kill you incredibly fast. I do think the pistol is imbalanced, but not grossly imbalanced, and I don't want to see dice nerf the heck out of this weapon. I think all it needs is a simple reduction in the rate of fire. Currently, it can shoot 250 rounds per minute, which is way too fast for a gun that can one shot headshot or two shot body shot in close quarters. Reduce the rate of fire to something like 200 or 210, and I think it'll be a much more well-balanced weapon. Item number eight is turret balance. I've been saying this for a long time, but I don't think the Imperials should be able to get into the bigger turrets like the turbo lasers or the big laser cannons on Hoth. Uh, I just think it creates an imbalanced situation when they can turn the rebels weapons against them and use them to absolutely obliterate them. It's too much armored superiority in a game mode where they already have AT-ATs and AT-SDs. In addition to that, the turbo lasers are crazy good. Their rate of fire and splash damage amount is too high in my opinion. You can absolutely decimate people and I think they should reduce the rate of fire on turbo lasers to balance them out a little bit more because there's points where you can just decimate a group of like 10 people before they even realize what's happening and that's something that's really bad especially when the empire can jump into that turbo laser and turn it on the rebels who thought it was their turbo laser item number nine is atst balance mostly referring to ranged combat i think there's a problem right now especially in hoth where lock-on weapons can lock atsts from way too far away preventing them from getting in close and so pilots of atsts are just going to try and stay as far away as possible and they can because their weapons are so good at range that they can absolutely obliterate people with their standard blaster cannons I think we could bring ATSDs into closer combat if we balance them out a little bit better. First of all, I think ATSDs should have less accurate blaster fire so that their shots are going to miss more frequently at longer ranges. In addition to that, I think they should reduce the lock on range 
for ion torpedoes for ground targets. That way you can't uh, just obliterate ATSDs from really far away. This will force the engagement distance to be closer for both parties, and I think it'll visually create more interesting battles and just overall be a more enjoyable experience. Now, in addition to that, if DICE was willing to further reduce the effectiveness of an ATST by maybe lessening the blast damage of their blaster cannons or something like that, uh, just making them a little bit more skill based. I think you could also add in maybe an active armor on the ATSDs, much like the fighters have, because currently they're completely vulnerable to any fighter in the game. You can one strafe an ATST, and there's virtually nothing they can do against it because their maneuverability isn't very good, so they can't really dodge incoming fighter fire. And so, as long as you're not aware of that fighter doing a direct strafe on you, they can get an instant kill on you without any return fire. The only defense is to constantly track fighters and try and shoot rockets at them to deter them from flying directly at you. But this is very hard to do because you have to spend your entire time in an ATST just staring at the sky. So if they had reactive armor, you could start getting shot by one of those strafing runs, activate it, and it would just make their defense against air targets a little bit better. Item number 10 is spawns. This is referring to Walker, Assault, on Supremacy, even some of the Team Deathmatch style game modes. There's a lot of spawn situations where players will just pop up right in front of you. I've had it happen to me multiple times on Supremacy for some easy kills or some just unfortunate situations. I think DICE could go a step further and create some more advanced spawn algorithms. And especially on Walker Assault, there's still situations where players are spawning into areas where they literally can't get out of dodge before dying. Um, spawning in an ATSD on Tatooine on Walker Assault, you're way out in the open. Chances are you're not even going to be able to get behind some cover before you get blown up. Same happens for infantry. Um, there's just a lot of situations where you just spawn way out in the open and you die instantly before you have any chance to get behind cover or do anything about it. I think they can still do another pass on the spawn situation for most of the game modes, primarily Walker Assault and Supremacy though. Anyway, I'm still loving the game. It's certainly not a broken game. It's a lot of fun to play but there are some major balance issues right now and some major tweaking that needs to be done before this game really starts to play smoothly and fairly for everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if there's any changes that you guys would like to see, any issues I didn't mention here. And as always, I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.